Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome to Agri Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is David Yoga. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team. I'm excited to welcome you to our discussion today. Agri Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we have a specific theme, this month's theme being water management. On today's call, we're joined by Michael Santiago, CEO of Floripulse. The Floripulse system is a microchip tensiometer uh, that is embedded into each tree uh, or vine's woody tissue and directly measures its water status, known as water potential. Because the measurement is taken directly inside the water carrying tissue, readings are very accurate and reliable. Growers receive daily midday stem water potential readings along with science-backed irrigation recommendations. Now, each of you knows companies are likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We invite you to this call because you're some of the smartest, most talented people in Floripulse's market. You are potential customers for, for Floripulse's products and services. You have built a company similar to Floripulse, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities Floripulse may face. Now, before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. Um, and while that poll is running, we have a few process comments. We are not soliciting investment. This presentation uh, is for is to provide information to help Floor Pulse find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships to help them grow their business. Uh, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time. And we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. And finally, this, this webinar will be recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Michael Santiago, CEO of Floor Pulse. Michael, feel free to take it away. Hi, everyone. I am Michael. Uh, thanks for the uh, awesome introduction to the company and myself. Uh, we can get going with the with the slides. So we're Floripulse. Uh, as I explained, we were solving the problem with irrigation. And if, just to give you a sense, uh, about every year, about $100 billion worth of fruits and nuts is lost due to suboptimal irrigation. It's a, it's a big, uh, worthwhile problem. Uh, but, you know, we're putting an end to that. We're actually working on solving this, this large issue. And just to give you a, a bit of a you know, introduction to the product that we have these water stress sensors, right? It's a little microchip that is embedded directly in the tree or the vine. Uh, in this instance, they help vineyards save water and improve the quality of the wine. So this is, this is a big, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, we've seen improvements of to about 20%. And just to give you a sense, right? Like if we can improve the wine quality, just a $1 uh, improvement, uh, it, it would turn out to be about $200,000 for a hundred acre vineyard. And so why quality, right? If you know about uh, vineyards and wine, you know the best wines, the best red wines are grown in dry regions and that's because the vines are water stressed. So there's an ideal amount of water stress that you wanna put on the vine to get the best quality wine possible. And with our systems, the grower can do that uh, consistently and uh, which much more uh, consistently and better quality every single year. Uh, and so on the other side of the coin, uh, our water sensors also help orchards save water and increase yield. So we've seen uh, water savings up to 45% uh, using our system and also increasing yield of about 15%, which can translate to about $70,000 for a 100 acre orchard. Uh, and so why does this matter, right? That the, by having more accurate data, the growers know exactly when to irrigate. And so when the plants are irrigated at the right level, not too much, if you irrigate it too much, then you get uh, you can drown the roots, you cause solid fungus and health issues. Likewise, if you irrigate too little, then you end up with like the trees are water stress and you get less lower yield. So by keeping the trees at the right level, the growers can dramatically increase your yield and save some water in the process. So this is our product. Uh, we have, a, again, a little microchip implant that goes inside the, the trunk. Uh, this was a technology that I, I helped invent at Cornell University during my PhD over there. Uh, it provides the most accurate water stress data by far, uh, and it's grower installed. So we've just developed this in a way that we can just put it in a little box, ship it to the grower, to the scientist, anywhere in the U.S. and abroad. Uh, and so there they can install it in 15 minutes or so and get like really, really awesome data on their phone directly. So why does it matter, right? And so the, the advantage that we have is that we can provide accurate data that's taken directly inside the plant and also automated. So right now there's a uh, product existing fall into two categories. Uh, there's the pressure chamber, which is very accurate, but it's hand operated. Uh, it requires uh, an operator to go out into the field and take these measurements manually, which is just not scalable and very expensive as well. And then we have a lot of like really, really cool technologies that are, are very valuable, but they, they don't really give you a direct measurement of water status. So you, you don't get anywhere near the, the much accuracy. 
So we can provide it again, accurate and automated. And so I just want to say, like, we've been scientifically validated. Uh, the, the technology was started by three Cornell University PhDs, uh, scientists, myself and, and two professors. Uh, we're working with Ken Shackle uh, and Davis, who's uh, the world expert on, on irrigation. And he's basically saying, yeah, like these guys, they give the most accurate picture. Uh, and so to give you a little bit of, uh, of how do we make money, right? Like what's the business? Our goal really is to get this technology out there. Uh, it, it, it seems like it can have a huge impact to growers worldwide. And so we're, we're pushing really to get that done. And so how we're doing that, we have a subscription model uh, where the growers receive the sensors in the mail, they install it in about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and then there's a yearly subscription fee, right? Which allows us to improve the product, provide better models, better data. And you know this, this has a lot of advantages, particularly in terms of cost, because there, there's no boots on the ground, so we don't have to send somebody out there to go and install this and, and do all these things. It's all just over the mail, uh, and so this also allows us to sell as little as one unit profitably, which helps our economics, but definitely helps our adoption. Right? It's much easier to say, "Hey, just buy one of these sensors, try it out," uh, versus having to go through this huge negotiation process for a long, uh, big uh, deal with a grower. So this is very scalable. We can easily sell one system, 100 systems to the same grower in the United States, but also abroad. Uh, so the team right now, uh, we have you know, expertise in engineering, science, and, and industry. Uh, myself, I'm a, the CEO. Uh, I got my PhD at Cornell University. I am a Latino as well. Uh, and then we have uh, two other founders, or Abraham Strook and Alan Lack, so two professors from Cornell University. Uh, Justin Fontes is like an awesome, awesome engineer uh, from, uh, from UC Davis as well. So, and you know, I just want to make the point that Alan Laxo has been in the industry for 40 years now, and Abe Struck is uh, the director of digital ads for Null University. So we got some good, uh, likewise, John Monroe, who's an advisor, Blue Diamond. So, you know, what's the track record? Well, we've been around for a little while now. Uh, we were founded in 2016. Uh, the technology is based for patents from Cornell University. Uh, we launched uh, last year. Uh, too, too much in hand, we couldn't, we couldn't keep up given the constraints from COVID. Uh, we've sold systems in 12 countries, uh, hundreds of units by now. Uh, and, you know, we have some pretty large customers in California and abroad uh, and, and partnerships as well with uh, distributors in, in the United States and California, but also in, uh, in Europe, for instance, and Chile. So and I just want to you know, give you guys a little bit about testimonials, what the customers say about us. Uh, we've helped these guys. These guys are based in Chile, in Chile, uh, all the way to Diego. Uh, they're using our, our kind of data, they say 45% in water. They decrease their pumping and drying costs, and then they increase the fruit size and yields. Uh, likewise, we have uh, here uh, Rod Chamberlain uh, from uh, Mecca, California. He, with our system, he saves 10% of water. And where we really help them out is that they deal with this like very, very hot uh, environment where he can go up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. It's very sandy soil. So we help them deal with this like very, very intense uh, heat waves where he can know that his trees are actually watered enough. So I just want to make a point, right? Like th there's a big impact that we can provide with this, in with this information, with this technology. Uh, we estimate about 65 trillion gallons of water saved uh, and about $2.5 billion of fruits and nuts. Uh, and, we, and the best part is we're going to produce even better red wines. Uh, so with this, you know, uh, just to kind of a summary, we can have a big value for the grower itself. Our uh, technology is scalable in terms of like uh, hardware costs and distribution. It's protected by patents. And we have a pretty large uh, opportunity as well. Uh, so, you know, with this, uh, here comes the app, right? Uh, thanks, guys, for listening to me. I've been working on this for almost 10 years now, so it's pretty exciting to really get it out there uh, and work with some really, really amazing people. Uh, we, we have a product that we really believe in. We're very excited, very happy with the results we're getting. So, right, we, right, it's now time to get it out there uh, and help, you know, increase sales in the United States and abroad and build partnerships. So, that's, that's what I'd like to help you to ask for some help with. Uh, we're looking for connections in agriculture. Uh, and, you know, in particular, you know, customers, so scientists, orchards, vineyards, uh, and then partners in distribution, sales, and marketing. If you know anyone or you're interested in working with us, we'd love to have you. Uh, likewise, people in the media and advisors, people that have experience in sales and agriculture, marketing, distribution, et cetera. And with that, thanks a bunch. I'll uh, take any questions. I don't, I don't hear, but, um, I'm sorry. I was on mute. I thought I had unmuted myself. Um, Michael, thank you so much for the fantastic presentation. Um, I want to reiterate to the audience, if you have questions, 
Um, feel free to type your questions into the Q&A box and I'll answer them in the order that they are received. Um, but to sort of kick things off, um, you know, having a, having a sensor in the plant as opposed to sensing data around the plant, can you talk about, uh, or around a group of plants, can you talk about sample rate and sort of how you guys think about placing sensors on the farm and how representative a measurement of one plant might be of other plants and how you sort of do that data reconciliation of sort of maybe localized weather data versus um, at the plant level data? Yeah, that's a good, good question. And um, the, so I guess the overall, just to frame the answer, it's, um, it's a relatively easy problem in some ways because the, the growers lack the data. So any, any kind of data is much more useful right now. The, the kind of data that you can get is maybe like one data point a week uh, with this other instrument. So what we, what we recommend is that growers, when they say, oh, we're going to put an irrigation block, right? They, they, uh, they segment their field according to soil types. So within that irrigation block where they turn on the top, all the trees are irrigated, it's, it's pretty uniform, right? And so what we do is we just take one or two trees uh, in, in that block that are representative for the whole block. And then we use those to then irrigate the whole block. So you can do some pretty fancy things of, uh, you know, putting a bunch of things, but the, a lot of sensors in the same irrigation blocks. The problem is that when you turn on the top, you can irrigate the whole block. So there's no, right now, there's no uh, advantage in having more than a couple of sensing sites per block. And, you know, irrigation block can be pretty large. So we're, we're talking about 10, 20, 50 acres. Uh, so it's, uh, and that, that means that we can provide a much, you know, more cost effective uh, service. I mean, so that, that being said, right, there's a lot of work being done in like having uh, irrigation at smaller and smaller sizes. But we can definitely work with that. And then, you know, we're working towards the Holy Grail, which is just to have a system that is close loop irrigation where the plants tell the, the you know, tell the, the, the pipes when to put water out. And everybody's super excited about it because nobody had likes to have to go out to the field, turn on taps on and off by hand. Thanks, Michael. Uh, any, any challenges moving from crop to crop um, and sort of where do you start to see perhaps, I mean, obviously this is, has clear applications in specialty crops. Do you see there being applications in more broad acre applications, but is it, is, or is it really better suited for specialty crop um, acreage? Right. So right now there's uh, there's a lot of, so I mean, so your first question as to the, the crops, right? This is something that we, our goal really is to provide the highest reliability possible, right? So we are doing thorough testing on every single crop uh, just to make sure that it works well in that crop uh, because it's uh, very important for, for the growers to get accurate data that they can really trust. And so as part of that, we're working with a lot of scientists in the US and abroad internationally to really, you know, fine tune the algorithms and make sure that everything like looks really, really good. Uh, so that, that's one thing. In terms of like broader adoption, right now we're really focused on the orchards because the I feel like the the uh, things like corn and wheat uh, they there's some usefulness to this, but that those growers have some pretty nice systems. The the but unfortunately the orchards are really lacking in these in this kind of measurement to accuracy. So right now we're really focused on that, on just getting it going. Uh, there's there's a pretty big market with that, and you know from there we'll probably go on to other crops as well. But right now we're you know, laser focused on the orchards and vineyards. Got it. And then given, given recent challenges with um, drought, particularly in the American West um, and a lot of the press that there's been around that, has that shifted interest in to solutions like this? Have you seen more inbound since then or was this already a large enough challenge that people were already very much aware of the, the water crisis they were facing? Yeah, that's a, it's funny. I mean, we've been, you know, we've been running this, like I've been involved in this for 10 years now. And so it's funny because you see there's a drought, there was another drought a few years back and everybody kind of thought about water. And then, you know, then things, you know, the, the drought kind of solved itself over time. And so then people don't think about it as much. So there's always been interest, but clearly now that there's like another drought and it's ongoing, the interest level has ramped up uh, quite a bit. Uh, but there's also other factors that are creating a lot of demand for the for these kind of technologies. Uh, one of them is the uh, Groundwater uh, Management Management Act. Uh, and then, you know, so growers are under, and then, you know, there's more heat heat, uh, heat events, things like that. So growers are under increased pressure to, you know, to save water, but even more than that, the, the big value of this drive is like that they can increase their yields and quality by just having consistent, uh, keeping their trees happy. So growers are, you know, also under uh, 
price pressure from, you know, there's more, uh, more competition internationally. So there's been a lot, a lot of interest. Uh, we're getting, yeah, the amount of growers and scientists who are like, hey, you know, let me, let me try this out. They're just kind of looking for that next thing, that, that slight edge that can make the difference between being unprofitable and profitable. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, Michael, I know you already you already sort of put out the um, the piece about asks, but um, any any final words you like to leave us here with? I mean, I just want to guess say, if like, anybody hmm? if anybody wants to get in touch with you, how should they reach out to you? Oh yeah, so I don't maybe I didn't put this here. Uh, they can just contact me at michael at foracles dot com. Uh, and I guess uh, you know just find us on our website. I mean, you know, you can, I'm sure you can find us. Uh, we we love to you know work with you uh, as a customer partner. Etc. We're, you know, we're, we're committed to this, We've been doing this for 10 years. So it's, it's right now labor of love. And we really appreciate the help. Any help that you guys can give us. Uh, we're, we're on to pretty, pretty amazing things. And so we'd love to have you as part of our, our journey. Fantastic. Well, uh, Michael, we'd really like to thank you for joining us today and congratulations again on all the progress to date. Um, I'd also like to thank the audience for, uh, for joining us as well. We host Agri-Food Conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. If you want to share those with a friend, we welcome you to do so. Uh, a replay of this webinar will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours, and new viewers can register for Agri-Food Conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. If you'd like to learn more, join us next week when we kick off our August theme of nutrient efficiency. Otherwise, Michael, thank you so much for your time today, and uh, thanks to our audience. Thanks, everyone.